Alright, uh, good evening everybody. Uh, for those who just tuned in, you see the login screen, uh, the server screen here for uh, GTR2. We're just uh, waiting for the uh, grid to be set for tonight's uh, two-hour event here at SPA. And uh, it's good to be back. And Brad, I don't know if you can hear me. Welcome. Thanks for uh, covering last week while I was away. Yeah, sure thing, Al. I got you loud and clear. I, I want to apologize to you and the rest of the NAGP and our viewers for uh, having some trouble with our pictures. We thought we had it all squared out and we're ready to go for the race. But it wasn't quite to be. I hope uh, you've had a good week, and it's uh, great to have you back here, Al. And uh, I know you missed it, but we had a, one heck of a barn burner uh, last week. Despite some of our bad pictures, the uh, qualifying race was a good one from start to finish. Well, unfortunately, uh, yeah, I was out of town, and uh, I did not get to see the race, but I heard uh, some great things about it. Uh, Ian Jolicor specifically getting pole and winning the qualifying race, and his teammate, Marty Uren, finishing second. Both those guys very uh, uh, in the ass and uh, very competitive at Spa. We've seen them in the past finish one and two at least one, one or two times before, so... I expect Marty, Ian, unfortunately, he's uh, out this week. He's on vacation himself, so, but expect Marty to uh, to be up there tonight uh, vying for a win here at Spa. Yeah, certainly. Those Aston Martin guys basically drove away from the rest of the field. Uh, Aaron Parsons was looking pretty solidly, the best of the rest there in third place, but uh, made a late mistake allowing Chris Moses to uh, sneak by, as well as a few others, should be noted. Um Right there at the end, so uh, so Chris Moses did take uh, the, over that third spot, and it's going to be important. Uh, he happened to finish ahead of Aaron Parsons going into tonight's race, and uh, Chris Moses will have to pick up points on Aaron Parsons tonight if he expects to uh, come away with this Season 18 championship. Well, Chris Moses did, in fact, uh, score an additional point uh, last week, finishing third in the qualifying race, so... That's definitely going to help his chances. It moves him up to just 11 points behind Aaron for the uh, overall Drivers' Championship uh, lead. 
and uh, yeah Chris is uh, at the moment kind of uh, kind of in the catbird seat as far as uh, the race goes here tonight he's gonna be starting in the second position seeing that Marty is, I mean sorry Ian is not making it here tonight so Chris will be on the front row uh, Aaron Parsons will be starting back in fifth Nick Johnston uh, who is currently uh, third in the championship, uh, 18 points back of Aaron. He will be starting uh, back in eighth. So both Aaron and Nick carrying quite a bit of weight going into tonight's race. And Tiago Canola, he'll be starting ninth, but uh, looking very quick in practice. Uh, the only guy I saw in the 18s leading up to tonight's race during this uh, last practice session. Yeah, indeed, Tiago Canola will be a force to be reckoned with this race. Uh, I think that uh, yeah, he had a little burb under his skin there, had a few troubles uh, last race here, this qualifying race, and I think is out to prove a point. Um, pretty remarkable that uh, he is getting that Porsche as, as quick as he is down some of these long straights. So really able to carry a lot of speed off some of these corners and uh, and just kind of make some power somehow in that Porsche uh, to stand up some uh, against some of these other strong power cars. So the race tonight will be 48 laps. Um, do we expect any type of <laughs> surprises from from Tiago as far as fuel uh, strategy goes? Uh, can he can he go the distance on one stop? I, I really don't think he can but uh, What's your take on that, Brad? He'd have to go tw uh, well, 24 laps, and uh, that'd be a tough task, but who knows? Yeah, it'd certainly be tough, and unfortunately I haven't had time to uh, work out the, the pit strategy most of these guys will be on. It should be, I believe, uh, uh, two stops for most of these guys. Uh, you know, you look at the lap times in practice here, and you got to think, well, Tiago Canola is not planning on doing anything tricky. <laughs> it looks like he's he might be planning to run it straight up tonight. And after all, we, we saw in the last couple weeks, Tiago's a double stinning strategy not working as well as it had the, the first six or seven races. Uh, so that combined along with the uh, the speed, that he, the pure speed he's showing here in practice, i got to think he's going to play it pretty straight up tonight. And uh, and run a pit stop or two. Yeah, I'm just looking through last season's results to see uh, most of the guys did pit, uh, did go with the two stop coming in around lap t uh, 16, uh, 17 around that that area. But we'll have to uh, keep an eye on that throughout the night to see uh, what Tiago is doing out there on track. Another guy to look at is uh, Greg Myers. Both those guys uh, very good with the uh, playing the fuel game. So uh, that that will be definitely something here to watch. Uh, as far as uh, oh, that's the uh, that's the championship rundown here tonight. Uh, it'll pretty much take a miracle for Tiago to win his second straight uh, to win back-to-back -back GT2 championships here tonight. He's uh, Aaron's leading the way with 163, but Tiago back with uh, 137 points. So uh, quite the deficit there for Tiago to make up. Yeah, I think actually Tiago is officially out of it, Al. Uh, I don't think that they even. I think he falls short by one point. Should oh, he yeah. manage to uh, yeah, win and pick up? All. Yeah, Tiago is out of it. Don't listen to me. <laughs> my math. Never the never the uh, excuse me. Never my uh, strong suit. But uh, okay, so it comes down to the top three. So there you go. Aaron Parsons, Chris Moses, and Nick Johnson. Both those, all those three guys, uh, uh, will be battling it out here for the championship here tonight. So, uh, so those are the guys you want to watch for. In uh, in the team championship, T. Brock Dam Bam. GT2 leading the way with 192 points. They scored big at Imola uh, two weeks ago. Uh, did not score any points in the qualifying race. PMR did pick up a point after the qualifying race, so uh, they're behind eight points in the team championship. 
Uh, we're going to have to watch those guys. Uh, Adrenaline and Taxi Service, that's Tiago and Greg Myers there in the hunt. Uh, with back with 171 points. And uh, uh, Nisa Racing, that is uh, Nick Johnston and John Hewson, back with 155. But I think they would need to finish 1 and 2, I believe. They'd, uh, they'd have to score max points here. You know, I think they might be out. I'd have to do the math, but I don't have my calculator on me. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's a it's a long shot. Put it that way, Al. Yeah, so uh, we we aren't taking bets, but you got some serious odds coming to you if if we were. So yeah, I just want to uh, welcome everybody who's tuned in here tonight. Uh, just rem again, if you're tuned in late, uh, we're just setting the grid for tonight's race. And uh, once that's done, we'll jump in and get started here uh, for this final race of the GT2 season. Uh, just want to thank you. Know, you know, I go ahead. Yeah, sorry about that. Uh, make sure to finish up your thought. I actually stayed here in the server. Uh, I think they're about ready to go. Well, that's great news. And uh, while I have a minute here before we jump on it, I just want to thank everybody who has tuned in throughout the season hopefully you enjoyed uh, the coverage we've provided for you guys and uh, look for more of the same next season here in GT2 and in GT1 as well so we've had a few ups and downs both in GT2 and GT1 so hopefully you can straighten those out and get you complete coverage uh, GT1 especially has uh, had some issues but should have that squared away. Let's see, do we have somebody yeah. jumping the channel here? Yeah, race control to broadcast booth. We'll be going uh, quality two in two minutes. Over. Got it. So there you have it. Two minutes will be uh, on the server. Well, uh, everybody's had a good chance to prepare from the qualifying race and leading up to it and all the practice and all the laps and uh, the hours, uh, literally hours spent by some of these guys are all going to come down uh, to the just the next couple here actually on track as uh, they fight it out. And I tell you, Al, if that uh, qualifying race is any indication, this is, uh, is going to be a heck of a time here. I know that uh, a couple guys that needed to pick up some speed to uh, try to help themselves out in these championships have done so. And uh, and so I think it's going to be a pretty tight affair over the course of this race. Uh, that uh, that Tiago wild card is going to be interesting to watch. And I tell you, regardless of his pit strategy, you know this guy is going to be saving time in the pits on fuel no matter what. Uh, so yeah, he's he's definitely going to be in the mix somewhere here by the end. I I would believe. Yeah. So even though Tiago's out of the championship, he still has that team championship uh, going for uh, for for him and his team. So, uh, there's no question he's going to be doing his best to get out uh, uh, up front and uh, uh, score maximum points here tonight. Um, so yeah, it's been a pretty uh, pretty memorable season up to this point. We've had some great great races here in GT2. Uh, a couple that stand out: Bathurst, uh, Golden Port back to back. Uh, that's when we first saw Tiago pull the old. Uh, you know, rabbit out of the out of the hat deal with the uh, uh, double stinting tires and uh, quick quick late stops there to we uh, get back to back wins. Uh, did the same at Kyalami. Uh, had a lot of guys scratching their heads, but uh, but as you mentioned, that that worked for him. He had a huge uh, non points finish at Hockenheim. That that really hurt him in lap one. Uh, hurt his championship uh, uh, aspirations, but uh, he did, you know, battle back the, the following week. He took pole at Slovakia, and uh, but since then uh, finished uh, off the podium in his uh, next two races races at Oschersleben and Imola. So. Yeah, absolutely right, and. Uh 
you know, another guy, uh, speaking of Tiago and some of his pit strategies, another guy that would be perhaps a bit more well and truly uh, in this championship mix, though he still is with an outside shot. And Nick Johnston, over the course of the season, has had some trouble with his pit stops. you got to think that uh, had those been a little bit improved uh, or had he... Oh, if things had worked out a little differently, he may be leading this championship by quite a few points. So uh, Nick Johnson as well over the course of the season, that that's something that kind of sticks out in my mind. And just to get, make one more quick note on Tiago, it's a little interesting. You know, his teammate last week um, finished ahead of Tiago, uh, taking a couple of vital points away from him and uh, and officially, officially uh, eliminating him from that championship. So no team orders in that team, and those guys are battle it out like anybody else. Yeah, I'm not sure if uh, I noticed that as well, and I was a little su surprised by that at Imola. I'm not sure if they did the math going into the race. Uh, they probably were uh, like us and did not do the math heading into the race, and uh, <laughs> and. Uh, Ultimately, <laughs> knocked Tiago out of contention. I mean, it, it would have been a miracle shot. I mean, he pretty much pretty much needed uh, the top three to uh, DNF in order for him to win. But still, uh, there's always that opportunity. So we are in the server here, and uh, just waiting for qualifying two to end, and uh, we'll be on to warm up and then the race. Yeah, well, and all those things that we talked about just go to show, you know, it takes a, takes a big uh, combination of luck and speed, uh, consistency, you pretty much have to have it all. And uh, in the end, it's not too surprising to see Chris Moses and Aaron Parsons up there, you know, kind of leading the way amongst all those other guys over the course of, uh, oh, it's basically 12 races, qual qualifying races thrown in. Uh, you know, these guys have gotten it done for a long time, and no doubt... Uh, Tiago, he's got himself a championship already. He'll be in plenty more uh, fights for it. Nick Johnson as well, but uh, that's the deal. One little slip up, and that uh, could be the end of your run. Yeah, and touching back on Nick, uh, going back on Nick there. Uh, this is this, this was his uh, or is his first full season in GT2. He joined us, I believe, for the last race at uh, the season before. But you know, um, with uh, you got to give. I mean, he did a tremendous job this season. Um, pretty much out of nowhere to uh, find himself here in third, in the third, uh, in third place in the championship standings and uh, fighting for a, a championship here in NAGP. And you know, um, being new, he's learning the uh, uh, early on. He learning uh, learned the uh, the whole pit strategy. He struggled for a while, and he finally figured it out. And uh, no, it really really paid off for him he uh, he uh, he did a tremendous job so look for him next season to definitely be uh, a front runner in the uh, in the championship for sure yeah no question Nick has done a great job and so I did didn't want to seem as if I was taking anything away from that uh, because uh, you're absolutely right he does have the speed he does have the consistency and just a few minor mistakes really have uh, have cost him a real legitimate shot here, but uh, then again, he is still in it. He definitely is, but well, the story right now is the top two, Aaron Parsons and Chris Moses. Uh, nine points separating uh, these two guys. Uh, Aaron in the lead. Well, Here's another uh, storyline. You have to look back at the first race of the season where Chris Moses won the qualifying race. And uh, a rare mistake by Aaron on the last lap of the feature race, uh, the two-hour race. Uh, Aaron went off and, and Moses uh, made the pass on Aaron on the last corner to win that race. So <clears throat> those were vital points there towards the championship. Yeah, that was a heck of a season highlight. Um, I think one of the big stories uh, tonight for me is actually going to be the uh, uh, the other two drivers here between uh, the PMR's Gup Douglas and uh, the Adrenaline Taxi Service of Gregory Myers and uh, uh, see how well those guys perform in this. It's a relatively close team championship battle. 
Uh, and then the third guy that I think I'm going to be keeping an eye on is John Houston there for TBROK Dam Bam, who uh, is leading that championship. I think it's going to come down to the, uh, we got all those three drivers up there in the championship, uh, individual driver championship standings, but uh, these guys are really going to have to perform tonight against each other, uh, you would think, if they uh, want to crack at this team title as well. So that's one that uh, I'm going to find very interesting tonight. The pressure is definitely on the second drivers uh, for that team championship, as you mentioned, specifically. Dominus, and especially John Houston. John Houston uh, throughout the season has uh, shown some good pace and uh, has, at, uh, well, what comes to mind, Hockenheim. He was running, uh, I believe, in the top 10 or uh, the six, and uh, before he had an accident on his own, he got himself out of the race. So he's got to avoid those situations and uh, make sure. Yeah, and it should be noted that uh, John Houston actually had a pretty darn good run last week in our qualifying race. He finished 10th uh, due to Ian Jolicor not being able to make the event here tonight. Uh, John Houston will be starting 9th, so uh, advantage that uh, TBROK Dam Bam uh, to start. Yeah, and Houston, uh, he had a good uh, score, 9 points in Imola two weeks ago, so uh, those were uh, big points towards the, uh, towards the championships. A bunch of different storylines to keep an eye on here tonight. We'll also bring you uh, other guys in the field who are out of it, but uh, still, uh, still racing here for points that uh, ultimately, ultimately go towards uh, where, they, uh, where they sit next season in terms of uh, the draft lottery. Yeah, absolutely, Al. There's so many guys in this field that uh, have a legitimate shot of winning champions, uh, championships. And uh, for whatever reason, just uh, a little bad luck, a little problem here or there. Like you say, it takes you out, but uh, it takes nothing away from those guys. Uh, it's just, just part of the deal around here, and uh, they're all going to be fast and on track tonight battling. So we have uh, we have seen some drama here in the past at Spa, especially in the championship fight a few seasons ago. Uh, we had, uh, Robert Fiorano and uh, Parsons get into it. Those guys were up up front in the championship uh, standings. Uh, Moses going at it last season. That was a great race. Uh, David Paul had a lot to win that race. Uh, he was in the championship fight, but uh, Chris Moses managed to finish where he needed to finish to uh, take that championship. Uh, I'm sorry, two seasons ago. Uh, last season, uh, yeah. Santiago took, took the win here at Spa. Yeah, and it was the season before the Furicano. Uh, Aaron incident uh, where Furicano did win that championship is the season before that one. Uh, Aaron was in line for that championship as he is tonight and uh, collecting a, getting involved in some lap traffic and losing a splitter on the, uh, the last lap, second to last lap, something like that. So we've had some fireworks late in some of these races. Uh, actually, almost all of them, really. So, <laughs> so you just never know what's going to happen around this place. It's a, it's a great track. Certainly is so. So as we mentioned earlier, we expect it to go. Uh, it'll go the distance unless it rains. Uh, 48 laps. Uh, it's the last season uh, race time was 116 minutes. Well, just shy of the two-hour mark. Fast lap was 18.7 set by Marty Uren. And the pole last season was a 17.1 by Tiago. Which was second quicker than this season's pole position. Two eighteen two by Ian. So those Lambos were dynamite last season. Yeah, indeed they were. So we'll have to keep an eye on obviously uh, the first lap here. 
Uh, Eau Rouge, especially. Hopefully, you guys can get through there. Uh, okay. Uh, we've had some uh, some memorable uh, incidents through Eau Rouge in the past. Uh, down the Camel Strait, leading, leading into Lacombe, we've had some uh, some incidents as well. Uh, into the bus stop and. Uh, Going into uh, turns 10, uh, turn 10, I should say. Uh, we've had some drama in the past, so hopefully, our guys can keep it clean and the guys in the championship can stay out of trouble. And, uh, it should be a great race, so hopefully, you guys enjoy it as warm ups about to conclude. Yeah, this is it. We're about two minutes away from the start and the conclusion here of Season 18. These guys have put in a lot of hard work out on track, a lot of weeks, and uh, uh, I personally would like to thank them for coming out week in, week out, and battling on track. Uh oh I think we lost somebody there. But, uh, yeah, so uh, the nerves are getting ratcheted up for these guys and, uh, and looking forward to this uh, endurance event. This, G, this GT2. Yeah, I'm trying to figure out who we might have lost, but uh, I cannot tell at the moment. All right, well, here we are, the final grid of the season here in GT2. Season 18, starting from pole, uh, will be Marty Uren, second, Chris Moses, Esteban Palacio, third, Dave Canavan, fourth, and Aaron Parsons will start fifth. Mike Monahan will be starting sixth, Nick Johnston starts seventh, Tiago Canola is eighth, John Houston starts ninth, and Marco Conti is in tenth. Rich Roman uh, will start eleventh, David Pohl twelfth, John Sportelli thirteenth, fourteenth, Johnny Lugnuts, and fifteenth, Curtis Chandler starts 16th, Gup Douglas is in 17th, John Solberger starts 18th, Drew Lidkia starts 19th, and Mike Grietrich starts 20th. 20. 21st, Brian Story, Salem Montgomery Jr., 22nd, Kevin Miller, 23rd, Christian Hamilton, 24th, and Mascarelli, 25th. Jake Ivey starts 26th, John Wathen is in 27th, Alex White is in 28th, Simon Goodwin's in 29th, and Andres Prieto brings up the rear in 30th. that being said, Brad, what's your take? Well, you know, I don't know. We got a lot of wild cards here. Uh, Tiago Canola will figure into this race. Uh, it's hard to say. Marty Uren, I know, has got good speed. Chris Moses has been putting in a lot of practice. He picked up some, some pace. Esteban Palacio is right up there. Hard to say with that, and Aaron Parsons is going to be wanting to get a few of these guys in front of him. I don't know, Al. Well, it's going to be a good call. time. I got a feeling Nick Johnson's going to work his way up, but I'm going to go with Esteban to take his first win of the season. Moses creeping a little bit, and they're off. Moses gets off to a great start, going into Eau Rouge. Looks like the rest of the field behind these guys is pretty good. Marty hangs on to the lead. Esteban will nestle back into third, right behind Chris Moses as they head into Lacombe. We got, Cal, a, we, uh... we got a big incident in the back. Brian Story's lost his front clip. Christian Hamilton's involved. Canola. Mascarelli's got some serious damage. Uh, looks like Dave Rowley, though both Fords are involved. Wow, heavy, heavy incident in the back, as we mentioned. And Rowley is a ton of damage. 
that looked like it took place at the exit of, uh, I'm sorry, on the Kemmel Strait. Not sure what exactly happened there, but a couple guys, looks like they got side by side and uh, some heavy damage. Really unfortunate, Al. I didn't see what happened, but you got to figure there's some jockeying for position back there, and that's uh, the absolute worst thing that could happen for these guys uh, at this moment. So, yeah, they'll do it fighting back they can, but as you say, Tiago Canola has uh, received some damage uh, back there as well, so a lot of guys in trouble here. On board with Nick Johnston, right behind here at Parsons, currently in the sixth position. As they head into Blanchmont and bus stop for the first time. Chris Moser with a huge slide on the exit of Blanchemont. Ooh, Esteban going to take a look on the inside of Moses into the bus stop. I thought better of it. Sportelli filling in for so long. Up to 12th. Right behind Johnny Lugnuts. He's moved up to 17th. And Christian Hamilton, he's got some damage on the front of that Ferrari, but uh, he's decided to stay out. So it's going to be interesting to see when these tires get warmed up and, uh, and start to get some grip in them exactly. Sorry, did we miss him? Yeah, Nick Johnson nearly wide on the exit of Old Rouge and uh, that could have been game over here early, really early here tonight. Somehow he managed to stay off the wall. Yeah, these guys off to a bit of a jittery start just to finish up. It'll be interesting to see the kind of lap times these guys start posting here uh, and match it with some of their qualifying uh, laps to see who's uh, put in some extra time and got a little extra pace out of these machines. Not sure what happened. Canavan has given up the fifth spot to Parsons, so Parsons moves up in position. He's now going uh, to the clutches of Nick Johnson here as a coach. Mikey Monahan yeah, currently in seventh spot. Yeah, David Canavan showing some pretty good pace here in that qualifying race, but uh, uh, not so much here at the moment. Yeah, we didn't mention it, but track conditions for these guys are uh, quite lovely, it has to be said, with a 68 degree ambient temperature and 86 degrees on track. So, lovely blue skies, perfect racing. Doug Douglas in the points, just how he needs to be there for PMR. You can find where John Houston is. A story into the pit lane. And his teammate Kevin Miller. Tough start for those two guys. Drew Litke as well. He's exited in the pits. Great tricks. Mascarelli coming in. And Rally just finally getting his uh, Ford into the pits. Meanwhile, up front, Marty Uren continues to lead this one. Yeah, Marty, you're in uh, leading at the moment and really taking out a few tents here and there on Chris Moses. So uh, Marty, you're in still showing great pace. I'm going with Palacio through Eau Rouge. Uh, Nick's going to have to be careful going through Eau Rouge. He's gotten it close. You can tell he's really pushing, but uh, he could get bit here if he's not careful. Yeah, trying to put that Panos power to the best use down this uh, long, long Kemmel Strait. You should mention Nick uh, as well as here and carrying, uh, I believe, Max Waite here going into tonight's race. That's 132 pounds. I'm not sure what that is. That's maximum weight. Max, yep. Mikey Monahan well, continues to hang on to this battle for uh, for a fifth spot with Canavan leading the way in this pack of cars. Now 
Now it should be noted, a quick update, David Poole did make his way up to ninth place from his uh, 12th on the grid, however, had a little problem at the bus stop and uh, got put back down to 11th, so tight fighting back there. Nick Johnson is definitely going to need to do what he can to get by Canavan, catch back up to Aaron Parsons, who's starting to pull away from that. Yeah, it'll only be a matter of Nick being able to stay close enough to David uh, coming up a ruse, so that may be why he's uh, taking a few chances there. Once he gets past, uh, it's real likely he'll be able to stay out in front. Houston currently in eighth. So Houston doing a great job so far this uh, early on in this race as the battle for eighth is really tight. Solberger, Roman, Kurt Chandler up in 12th, and Poole battling his teammate, well, his filling teammate tonight, uh, John Sportelli, is currently in 10. I have to think John Sportelli will go ahead and uh, move on over here for David Poole. They were involved in an incident last week, John, in that substitute uh, team role there, and uh, had an unfortunate coming together with David Poole. So John's going to be pretty careful with David Poole. Let's watch these two Audis trying to get by Marco Carney in the Lambo. Looks like Sportelli is going to take that position. Ooh, broke a little too deep. Poole looking to take advantage. Sportelli makes a pass, but Poole gets caught out and Kurt Chandler gets by. As now Rich Roman and Rich Roman has a look. On the outside of Poole, but not better. All right, it's just a heck of a deal sometimes to, uh, to have speed and just find yourself get caught up in situations. Uh, it's so tough to show some patience, but uh, David Poole is really doing a great job right now. Solberger looks to be fighting that Camaro a little bit around here. Still hanging on to that 14th uh, spot. Not letting these guys get too far away. Now oh, Sportelli going to work on Houston as they head into Blanchemont and into the bus stop. Yeah, John Houston running well up there in eighth, though. Yeah, uh, not going to be an easy pass in that Viper. Ooh, big slide by Houston. It's going to allow Spotelli to catch up to him. We're going to have to follow these guys through a rouge. Roman. Now uh, all over the back of pool. As they head into La Circus. Yeah, that's one heck of a battle back. Uh, meanwhile, quick update. Marty Uren just taking out an extra tenth here or there on Chris Moses, but uh, certainly not pulling away so far. Chris Moses can't see him. Oh, Sportelli just managed to stay onto that. The exit of Eau Rouge. That could have been up. That was a great save by John. I saw that as well. Uh, just got it slowed down enough to hit that pit exit. Got a little extra grip. Tiago involved in that first lap deal has moved his way up to 15th and now he is very quick here so we'll keep an eye on Tiago. It shouldn't take him too much longer to catch up to that battle. Alex White, another guy. Yeah, I've been, Sorry, go ahead. I've been keeping an eye on Tiago Canola and some of his lap times. They are a bit off but he certainly does have pace on the people around him for sure. Alex White, another guy. He's joined GT2 late this season, but uh, he's exceptionally quick and uh, we'll have to keep an eye on him as well. Hugnuts has fallen back out of the points. He's back in 17th. Not sure what happened to Gup Douglas. Gup falling back to 21st. He was up in the points for a little while. He's going to have to go to work.
Well, despite that uh, opening lap melee, we do have most of our competitors at least still in this race and able to continue on, so that's the good news. Marty, your end continues to lead this one. So these guys are carrying full fuel loads as opposed to the, the relatively light fuel load they had for our qualifying sprint race or one half hour sprint race, but I have to say the times are a little bit higher than I would have expected. I know that uh, some of these guys can run in the low 19s and we really haven't seen any of those except for Marty Uren has run one lap in the 19.3 range. Uh, but the time's not yet uh, quite as low as I would expect to see them. Marty with a two and a half second gap over Chris Moses and he's getting, uh, getting a bit of a toe down the Kemmel straight from that Mustang who uh, had to pit due to that first lap incident. Yeah, that gap opened up about a second and a half just on this last lap, so I think Chris Moses might have had a little problem out there someplace. Esteban Palacio has not let him go too far in front either, so Esteban Palacio is still in there with a fighting chance for second early. Now we just picked up that battle as Esti is all over the back of Moses. degree ambient condition, 66 degree track, track temp. It does tend to rain here quite a bit at Spa, so we will keep an eye on that as our conditions could change throughout this race. Yeah, I got pretty lucky. I think it was last season where the rain was threatening there the last couple three laps, but uh, held off. Nick Johnson continues to uh, sit behind uh, Canavan, but these two guys have managed to uh, close the gap a little bit up on Aaron Parsons. Yeah, they have indeed, and of course with all that weight, uh, not too surprising now. Really, that opening lap melee did not hurt Chris Moses in the least. He needs to gain a few positions yet on Aaron Parsons as they run right now. Aaron Parsons is your season 18 and, uh, champion winner, so uh, if those guys could slip past Aaron, that's not going to uh, upset Chris Moses too much. Continue to ride along here with uh, Nick Johnson. You should mention Aaron has, uh, in the past, had uh, some spectacular exits here at Spa. And so. <laughs> Didi has. It, it's been a while since that happened, and hopefully it doesn't happen tonight. But uh, I suppose you never know. Those were some spectacular exits. Houston continues to uh, lead Sportelli. Early in eighth spot. Ooh, with a huge lurch going into Lacombe. That's a lot. Sportelli to close up on him a little more. And a quick update, Al. David Canavan has gotten past Aaron Parsons for the fourth position, and so Nick Johnston now is nipping at Aaron's heels. So now we see Tiago Canola has uh, joined this fight here. He's caught up. Uh, Rich Roman has fallen back a few positions. He's behind Solberger. And he's now feeling the heat from Canola, who, is, uh, as we saw in practice, can, can, uh, can lap this track in the 18s in that Porsche. So he is exceptionally quick. And Alex Wood is right behind him. Yeah, it's not too late for Tiago uh, necessarily to maybe challenge for some of these top spots around here, but uh, one thing's for sure, he's he's going to have to get the damage fixed on that car if he expects to uh, really challenge. So he'll have to keep it as close as he can with the damage he's got and uh, get that fixed up as ASAP. Ooh, Alex running a little wide at the exit. Ooh, 
Sportelli has spun the Audi, has fallen back to 16th. Not sure what happened there to Sporto. But he's been cut off. He's going to fall back now out of the points. Oh, and he looks like he's got a puncture. Sportelli has, he must have hit the wall. Maybe put a wheel off on the exit. On the exit of Puhon. I'm sorry, uh, not Puhon. Uh, turn 16 stop lot. And he is into the pit lane. It looks like he cut the pit lane to get in, so hopefully he doesn't get a uh, cut track one. So it's Portelli. Ooh, and Lugnuts now at La Circus puts it nose first into the tire wall, and he's bucked it. Oh! Oh, tough luck for John. What a that's a that's a tough way to end your season 18 run. But you know what? I think it's been more or less a forgettable season for Johnny. So uh, he might be looking forward to uh, next season anyway. Get an early start on that, Johnny. Well, meanwhile, Alex White has gotten past Canola for 13th and uh, had a look on uh, Roman at the end of the Camel Straight. And uh, I, I really have to think that's a case of Tiago's damage affecting the speed of that portion. Looks like Mikey Monahan may have had a bit of an off. He's falling back a bit from Nick. Well, Nick has now, oh, I should say Canavan has gotten past Aaron Parsons, and Johnston now is all over the back of Parsons. We'll keep an eye on these guys. Yeah, David making that pass a couple laps ago and uh, has been slowly, very slowly, but steadily pulling away. And Nick Johnson has been uh, back here for uh, those couple laps as well, just uh, looking for a way past. Hasn't been able to do it yet. have a quick update on another position here uh, between David Poole and John Houston. Poole is uh, nipping at John's uh, bumper here for the 8th position. On the up with Aaron Parsons. I'm going to look back at Johnson as they go through the rouge. See if Johnson can get a toe off Pars uh, Parsons through the, uh, down the chemical strip. Cleanest exit for Nick. Still quite a few fights going on. Uh, we're pairing off in twos and threes in these groups and uh, boy they're fighting hard out there all the way through this field. No I'm looking through timing and scoring here Al. One guy I don't see is Gregory Myers. So I don't know if he was, I guess he wasn't our disconnect, Sam was, but uh, he may have gotten caught up in that early incident and uh, Gregory Myers I think is out of this race. That's a tough break for Greg. We'll have to Unfortunately, uh, GTR2 doesn't offer the uh, to, uh, replay on demand, although that would be a nice button. Not sure how that uh, incident took place, but uh, we did see uh, some of that carnage as the cars were making their way down the street for the first time. Should give you a quick update here on Tiago Canola. He has managed to get past Rich Roman and back past Alex White for the 12th position.
here and hard on the brakes. And Johnson is all in the back of the cab. Well, this is only benefit benefiting uh, Moses as we run right now. Uh, yeah, indeed, Al. He would like to see uh, maybe even a few more guys get in front of Aaron, if at all possible, but not too much in the offing at the moment, though. Tiago uh, does continue to make a st steady progress through this field, now involved in a five-way fight. So Uren's lead over Moses now. Nearly six seconds. He's driving away with this one so far. Yeah, well, that gap is very manageable. Uh, we do have a couple pit stops yet to make. Uh, we close in, a, almost starting to close in on one here. So uh, five seconds, not uh, not too unmanageable of a gap there for Chris Moses. And of course, Esteban's still hanging right in there. A little surprising, I have to say. But uh, in any event, uh, there you go. The, the race is on. Nick has lost a bit of time to Parsons. We'll have to keep an eye on Nick as we head towards our first set of pit stops. So he's able to uh, get in and out uh, in a regular, in, in a decent uh, amount of time. As we know, uh, Aaron Parsons is dynamite in the pits. Indeed, he is out. Yeah, you do have a few opportunities to pick up some time in and out of these pit, uh, the pits here at Spa. Um, uh, with a little bit of risk, you can improve that entry into the pits, and then on exit, of course, we uh, have to kind of loop around the top of a rouge there. And uh, so a few extra risks can gain you a little bit of time. David Poole has managed to get by John Houston for the eighth spot. Uh, got Kurt Chandler all over the back of him. Well, I shouldn't say all over the back of him. But a second to change behind Tiago Canolo. They're looming in 11 spot. Yeah, David Poole, it's, we saw him show some great patience there early, uh, looking to have some pace on some of those guys in front, and it's really paid off. So. David Poole looking a little more racy here than I thought he might uh, in terms of lap times to some of the guys in front. So uh, definitely not out of the mix for a, for a decent finish for David. Solberger and Alex White going three wide down the uh, Camel Straight. Oh, Solberger's going to hang on to it. That was a little uh, touch and go there. <laughs> Troman uh, got off a little bit by that lap car, but by without, without trouble. You know, John Solberger was uh, running up a little bit higher. There's been people coming up on him who uh, maybe have had a little bit better pace, but he has uh, turned in a great performance. He's uh, run everybody very clean and uh, still running in the 12th spot. So a good run for John Solberger here to start. Yeah, Alex White is uh, really, uh, uh, really giving it to him here. Can to get by, we'll follow this battle. This Camaro probably uh, not as uh, nimble through this uh, part of the track here, this middle sector of the track. Definitely yes, certainly not. Not, not especially. Sorry, Al. Not especially compared to the Z4. That's a that's a mismatch. Alex on the inside going through Blanchemont. Can he make it? Yes. Wow, great pass by Alex White. Ooh, and Solberg is gonna have a look on the inside going in the bus stop. And Solberger. Ooh, Alex makes the pass finally. And Roman. Roman had a look on the inside, but. Wow, great pass by Alex White. Took him uh, a couple corners to make it happen, but excellent job, man. Excellent job by Solberg to keep that uh, keep it clean. 
clean. Well, had a quick update here. Next on Tiago Canola's hit list is uh, John Houston. Uh, Tiago running just a half second or so off of John's bumper at the moment. Hamilton back in 16th, he uh, continues to, uh, to trudge on here as he uh, has quite a bit of damage in the front of that Ferrari. In the points as we uh, stand right now. Goodwin back in 17th in the McLaren. John Wathen, oh he's still in this one, back in 18th. Tough season for John. Yeah, taking a look at timing and scoring here, Al, I keep uh, been keeping my eye on Esteban Palacio. He has been matching Marty Urin uh, here on pace and lap times. However, uh, Chris Moses has been slipping back a little bit and is about to fall into the clutches of Esteban Palacio for that uh, second spot. Gup Douglas here, now back in 19. Battling with one of the lap uh, Mustangs here. It's like that might be Kevin Miller, I believe. It's like Kevin might have him on pace, just trying to get by. Jack Ivey back in 20th. Sportelli, after getting service for that puncture, finds himself back in 21st. And Montgomery Jr. exiting the, uh, either exiting or pulling into the pit lane. This some guy's pit. Uh, straight before the circus and some on the main street, so I'm not sure if he's pitted yet or if he's going into his pit stall. Very, very long pit lane here. Great story back in 23rd. Drew Lidgett, 24th. Lou Mascarelli, 25th. Good on Lou to stay out there after getting, uh, really getting blasted in the first uh, lap. Kevin Miller, yep, that is the one down with Gup Douglas. Ooh, Guppa! Blast the, uh, Finish up your rundown. Blast the wall. And Greatrix 27. And that's the top. Those are your uh, running cars right now. As Chris Moses now yep. under the clutches here of Esteban Palacios. Looking for a way to get by Moses. Yeah, Esteban had a look there entering Lacombe. Couldn't quite make it work. Update. Tiago Canola has got past John Houston for the ninth position. Tiago Canola up to ninth. Working lap 13. Still a few more laps here to go before this guy is diving in the pit lane. Yeah, but they're starting to think about it. And uh, some of these guys will be, yeah, some of these guys will be starting to think how to best make use of a strategy, maybe to gain some time on a, a guy in front. This was a bit of a mistake. There's a lot Esteban to get all over the back of him. Almost gave that position away. That's the gonna have a look on the inside of uh, La Circus. Not better. Yeah, looking. At yeah, looking at it, Al, I have to say Chris Moses uh, looked pretty aggressive on his setup here, and I think it's costing him towards the end of his spin. Yeah, I was just going to mention that. It looks like he's uh, fighting that BMW here. I should expect Chris to He's the type of guy that uh, it's not working for him. He'll, uh, Try and make up some time on track. 
Yeah, certainly. And of course, you know, these guys can make some tire pressure adjustments. That can help out a bit too. So Nick Johnson, after uh, really getting close to uh, to Parsons here early on this stint, has faded quite a bit. Carson's still hanging on a little bit here to Canavan, not letting him get too far out of reach. Yeah, I've been keeping my eye on that battle, Al, and yeah, you're absolutely right. Nick Johnston has not really made mistakes, but just has uh, kind of steadily fallen off Aaron's bumper, and I, it's obviously down to uh, a little setup wear there for Nick. One of these uh, cool temps are hurting him with that uh, Pirelli shot, uh, Panos. Well, it's a possibility, but the track 81 degrees should uh, be holding enough heat to uh, to keep them up to temperature. But yeah, it's hard to say. Yeah, Esteban having a really solid run here. Yeah, really smooth. Yeah, man. Yeah, has fallen off of uh, Marty's pace only because of the uh, fighting with Chris Moses here. So. Yeah, no question. Well, it, no reason why it can't happen right here tonight. There's so much uh, racing left. And, you know, you, you think 10 seconds is a pretty big distance, but not really. That can go away in the space of about, oh, 10 seconds. Yeah, so. mistake on track or mistake in the pits. Monahan in a pretty quiet night here running around in the seventh spot. David Bull now up to yeah, eight. Mike. Go ahead. I was just gonna say, yeah, Mike finds himself running a little bit alone. Of course he is Esteban Palacio's teammate who is up there running in third, so yeah, you know the car's running pretty good. So John Houston now running in the tenth spot. And then we got Kurt Chandler, Alex White, and Rich Roman. This battle continues. This has pretty much been like this since the start of the race. And Solberg is still hanging on there. In 14th, he's falling back a couple spots, but uh, still doing a great job. That's White having a look on the inside of Kurt into Pujol and makes it stick as Roman with a huge save. Nice. Mistake, a uh, bit of a mistake, break a little too late, but it looks like he's going to hang on to that position. And I get the feeling, I get the, I'm sensing that uh, Roman's getting a little frustrated being where he is right now. I think he uh, feels like he should be further up. Yeah, I'm not sure about that, Al. I kind of been keeping tabs on uh, Rich as well, and uh, I don't know that he's got the overall lap time and pace to to be a whole lot farther up than he is. I, I think he could be. He's obviously a, a very experienced uh, racer, but then again, so is Curtis Chandler. So uh, these guys are good, gonna know how to maximize what it is they've got. Uh, Nick Johnson into the pits, Al. Nick, first to act here. Meanwhile, Alex White is making a huge headway here, starting near the back, up to 11th, and now about to uh, now going to work on John Houston for that 10th spot. Yeah, I think Alex have made it through that first lap melee a little bit better than some others, and so that certainly improved his position straight off, and obviously he's got the speed here on track once uh, they've settled down. So Moses continues to lead uh, 
Esteban. Esteban has not let him go. What do you think about that decision to pit now by uh, by Nick? Do you think uh, it's too early? No, I don't think it, it really hurts him at all, and it could help him. Uh, obviously, he was falling off the pace uh, kind of dramatically, so uh, you know he'll look to pick up some time on track, hopefully on some fresh rubber, and maybe make some pressure adjustment. Uh, for, you never know, maybe he had some type of damage, uh, some incident or something uh, to repair, so I don't think it hurts him. Now, the length of stop and making mistakes uh, will end the pits, that's something else I'll be getting. Now, one other quick note, I've been keeping an eye here on Tiago Canola, and just keeping an eye on that gap from the problems that he had early. You know, he's managed to hold that gap right within about 27 seconds of the overall lead. Uh, despite coming through all this traffic, Tiago Canola, I think, uh, uh, can uh, still easily factor into this championship. He's going to be saving some time in the pits over these guys, or rather this race, excuse me. One guy we should mention so, uh, is... Uh, caught up to this battle between Moses and Palacio as Moses, Palacio, and Canavan all dive into the pit lane. Wow. All at the same time. Hard on the brakes. This will be interesting. Uh, Parsons as well into the pits. Mikey Monahan. Yeah, so the these pits. guys these guys coming in just the next lap after Nick Johnson. He may not be able to have a huge advantage on those fresh tires. Pull into the pits. Tiago stays out. Marty, you're in, also in the pit lane. Alex White's going to stay out. Uh, let's see, Houston stays out. Uh, Kurt stays out, and Solberger as well. Roman into the pits. Now here's, an, now here's another thought on Tiago, Al. You know, I've been putting down his lap times due to damage, but he may not have any damage. He was around that melee, but uh, if, those, if he doesn't have any damage and he's turning those lap times, and he's on a one-stop. Marty is away. We'll have to keep an eye on Moses. Monahan. Let's see what Marty exits. Parsons right behind Chris Moses in the pits. The pole pulls into his box. Moses on the jacks. Oh, this is going to be exciting. See these guys come off the jacks. Marty will retain the lead on track. Pull, uh, uh, Moses away. Esteban away. Canavan is away. Parsons still. We'll have to see where Nick Johnson comes out. Chris Moses did pick up time on Marty Wren in the pits. Nick Johnson now about to uh, go through a rouge. Let's see where he is in relation to Parsons. Oh, he's going to beat uh, Monahan out. And uh, he looks like he might have picked up some time on, uh, on Parsons. So Johnson with a good stop. Oh, that's a reverse. Wow. So yeah, that, that gap is now only a couple seconds. So great job by Nick to get in and out. You know, and I wonder if all those guys coming in at the same time, almost nose to tail, didn't uh, cause a little action there around the uh, the the timing lights coming into the pits. Uh, t you know, having to be a little extra cautious in there with traffic around. John Houston pulls it into the pits. Kurt right behind. Solberg is going to stay out. Alex White and Tiago will continue on track. Yeah, I'm curious to know what uh, what that fuel strategy is for Tiago. Yeah, as am I, although, you know, if the guy hasn't stopped yet, you almost have to peg him a, a certain 
one stop or, or maybe a, a splash at the end of uh, this race or something. Trying to see if we can grab somebody who might be out of this race. Find out what exactly happened, but uh, I believe everybody was out as exited. <laughs> so, meanwhile, back to the racing here. Tiago leading. Alex White in second. Solberger continuing out on track. He's uh, in third. He has yet to pit. Let's see what Solberger decides to do here. Yeah, so it looks like the... Uh same running order here, basically, with Chris Moses picking up some time on Marty Uren and Nick Johnson picking up some time on Aaron Parson. See John Houston into the pits, uh, just exiting the pits now, so it looked like he waited an extra lap to come in. Yeah, he did. Uh, and Alex White still on track. Let's see what he decides to do here. He is pulling it into the pit lane, so Alex pits. That BMW, of course, getting very good fuel mileage. Solberger now into the pit. Marty, getting by Jack Ivey. So that was a good stop by Chris. He made up some time on Esteban and... Uh, and Marty as well, so he put some distance between himself and us. So we got a little it bit was of really here. Go ahead. Yeah, that was a nails pit stop by Chris Moses, and uh, I suspect he's going to push like mad here, try to uh, hold the gap to Marty as long as he can. We'll just have to see if he's going to fall off toward the end of the stint again. Alex White and John Solberg into the pit stop. Or, you already caught Alec. Alex yeah, White, yeah. sorry about that. Swartelli. Yeah, well... Swartelli currently running in 12th. He's, uh, he's pitted, he, well, he pitted earlier due to a puncture, but now running behind his teammate. Uh, he's up ahead. As yeah, Roman and Houston now duking it out here. As they go into the, to the bus stop, Roman having a look on the inside. Not gonna happen. Yeah, not yet anyway. It doesn't look like that Ferrari just has the legs down the straight to Was able to keep it close anyway, so that's something. John Houston has been uh, relatively steady on the nerves, but not perfect, we've seen. Uh, so after all, he has given up a few spots here to start this race. So uh, Rich will definitely be looking to take uh, any advantage of any little twitches out there. That's what he's hoping for, anyway. Really on the bumper of Houston and the exit of no name left hander. Santa Pujol. Yeah, Rich did a nice job of backing off there, entering Pujol to, uh, to try to take a, a good aggressive uh, line. Couldn't quite make it stick there. Boy, it just 
so a glitch, man. It's tough for him. He just can't uh, can't get close to that Viper. He's got to do it on the braking going into the bus stop. Yeah, I'll see how they get Houston through here. Makes a mistake like that, and runs wide, but still not close enough. Yeah, that's that's tough, especially they're on that little back straight that that Viper will accelerate uh, out of there quite a bit better, um, as opposed to a Rouge, where uh, if you get a car to handle and set up much better, it, it will help them out a bit. Even with that lack of speed compared to the Viper, but the, under just corner and power conditions, uh, that Viper no match for the Ferrari. Tiago into the pit lane. Ah! Tiago pitting on lap 20. So it looks like he's yeah, stopping go. Sh short of halfway. Well, that's interesting. So, uh, he definitely won't be taking tires on his second stop. He'll be taking some fuel. And uh, we'll find out where he's going to slot in about four laps from the end. Out. Let's see what he decides to do here. If he decides to uh, just gas and go or what? He may take tires on his second stop. I mean, is this a track where he could double stint in this Porsche or... Just lose too much time doing that. Well, no, the fuel conservation does allow him a little bit of wiggle room. Uh, if he can eliminate most of one stop by just taking fuel and gain himself the, the time, uh, yeah, he can probably push those tires an extra, whatever it would be, seven or eight laps. So I expect him to do just that. Out. That's what I'd be trying to do. Looks like he's taking tires. So Marty's going to take over the lead. We'll have to see where Tiago comes out in relation to uh, the other guys here. Yeah, it doesn't look like Nick can just uh, make up any time on Parsons. It's got some damage on the inside of that, uh, on the, uh, driver's side. Or, they catch him scrape from the wall on the exit of, of, uh, Osarkis and entering, uh, Eau Rouge, so. Hmm, interesting. Yeah, so Tiago Canola comes back out ninth. He gave up, uh, oh, two, two and a half seconds thereabouts uh, to the overall leader. But uh, I suspect he will eliminate that tire stop and uh, not have to take on so much fuel here uh, the next time he does stop. So it'll be interesting to see how this is going to shake out toward the end. Alex White rejoins in 10th. The uh, Canola gets out ahead of White. It's still a great job by White to get into the top 10 at this point of the race after starting near the back. Yeah, indeed, and we have a heck of a battle going on over the 11th position between John Sportelli, John Houston, and Rich Rome. Yeah, we just picked that up. Sportelli pitted earlier to a puncture. Uh, he could be closing in on a pit stop himself, Sportelli, but he's, uh, he's going to be off cycle. These guys, of course, on pressure tires than John Sportelli, so making some headway on him. This could be it 
for Roman. Ooh, that's Houston. Oh. Not sure if he... I don't think that was... Uh, I think that was just uh, the braking uh, hard on the brakes. The car just looked like it lurched to the, uh, to the right, so Roman gets by Houston. Yeah, I think that's absolutely right. There is a little bump there in that braking zone. I think the rear end uh, just broke a little loose on Not too surprising given that uh, these guys were going right up to the last uh, foot of braking here trying to uh, hold that position against each other. Well, Rich has, uh, unfortunately, Alex White uh, there in a uh, virtual 10th uh, place. John Sportelli, we know, will have to pit. Uh, unfortunately, Alex White has dwindled into the distance a little bit on Rich, so got a bit of ground to make it. A little further back, we got John Sport, I'm sorry, John Solberger, Kurt Chandler, and Marco Coney. This is a uh, battle that's brewing here as these guys are starting to up on one another. Marco and uh, yep. uh, and Kirk, the stories earlier on this season, both doing exceptionally well. Scoring great points. Yeah, I have to say I'm a little surprised to see Curtis Chandler slipping back quite as far as he did. Uh, you know, he was showing pretty good pace there in our qualifying race, had an incident out there. Uh, but started uh, you know pretty decently up here, but uh, since uh, slipped back a little bit since the drop of the green. So uh, Christian Hamilton back in 17th after his stop. Looks like he's got that Ferrari repaired. Yeah, and I'm just keeping an eye here up toward the front. Uh, Chris Moses is uh, holding much better pace here to the start of this second, second stint. <laughs> excuse me. Um, and uh, has been able to match Marty's uh, pace so far, but the, the lap times much more consistent uh, and much better laps from Chris Moses here to start the second stint. Uh, track does continue to get cooler here, it has to be said, so 76 degrees now out there. Well, right now at the moment, fast lap of the race is owned by Alex White with a 219.1. Yeah, and those are more toward the uh, the practice times we were seeing there. That uh, most of these guys have not been able to match uh, here yet in this race, except for Alec. Looking at Johnson's pace, he's a bit off. Uh, his last lap was a 2:21, so he looks like he's falling off a little bit. Either that, he could have just yeah. made a mistake. Yeah, that gap to Aaron Parsons not unmanageable, but he'll definitely want to stay as close as he can. Still have a heck of a battle here. Quick update on Rich Roman and John Sportelli. Still fighting pretty hard for that 11th position, and... Uh, it's a battle I'm kind of interested in watching because, of course, these are longtime GT1 teammates until just this last season. So, yes, Roman having a look on the inside of Pujol. That's right. I, ooh, Roman oh. gives Sportelli a little touch, and Sportelli. <laughs> wow, no love lost there. Roman. Hey, Rich does. Yeah, Rich does not look like he's so interested in uh, waiting and giving that position back. He, no, as Sportelli uh, with a giant lurch slide hangs onto it. Wow. Uh, yeah, to be fair, you know, you can think uh, one way or the other, but to be fair, uh, Rich does know John has yet to make a pit stop yet, so uh, perhaps that, that was part of his thinking there. But That's Fortunately, both sur survived anyway. It's a lot, Houston, to get all of the back of Sportelli. Nice job by Sporto to hang on to that. A Sporto. Not sure what happened. So a 
tell he loses it going into the bus stop. Looks like Sportelli's pulling into the pit lane. I think he just missed his break mark and just went for a ride there for Sporto. So Sporto into the pits. He's gonna move. Oh, as uh, Solberger just gets by Kurt Chandler for 13th. Marco moves up to 15th, and that's gonna allow Hamilton to move into the points. So interesting night for Sportelli thus far. Yes, and an interesting qualifying race as well. So the hits uh, continue. Montgomery has moved up to 19th. Not far out of the points. Gulp Douglas right behind him in 20th. Jack Ivey. Uh oh. Yeah, boy. Well, it looks like uh, we've had a disconnect here. Well, our audio is still up there, Al, so looks like we have disconnected from the server. I think at the, we look around here, I see 20 still in for the race. I think there's been a mass disconnect here. Yeah, there's people still out on track, it looks like. Well, we just can't catch a break on the uh, on these broadcasts here. Well, well in the meantime, while Al is, oh, go ahead. No, I was just gonna say I apologize for that. Let me see if uh, looks like the race is still ongoing here. Yeah, it'll probably be tough for us to get our pictures back, uh, but uh, while Al figures out what he's got going on, uh, just have to direct our viewers over there to our live timing and scoring uh, in the meantime, so I apologize for that. Drop as well, Brad? Yes. Apologize, uh, folks, for that. Uh, unfortunately, uh, disconnects do happen. Not sure what caused that, but uh, still have several guys out on track. 20 total. And the uh, contenders are still out there. Uh, Moses, Parsons, Johnson, they maintain their connection. Canola. Well, that's good anyway. Yeah, I, I mean, it, uh, it's a heck of a fight. Uh, it would have been nice, obviously, to be able to see how this one was going to end up. Uh, those, uh, those positions were far from decided, uh, particularly with Chris Moses uh, really showing some signs of life there in that second stint uh, and really starting to make a push there on Marty Uren. So that's uh, it's really unfortunate. Uh, again, uh, we had the opportunity to follow along on live timing and scoring there, but might be the best we could do. Yeah, apologize for that, guys. Uh, like I said, you know, those things do happen sometimes, so. Well, 
Well, I guess at this point we'll have to wait and see what uh, what happens here in the uh, conclusion of this race. Uh, uh, you know, I just want to thank everybody who has tuned in for uh, this season, and uh, you know, unfortunately we can't bring you the conclusion of this race due to the uh, to the disconnect. But uh, uh, keep an eye on the uh, the forum, and uh, you'll find out soon enough who uh, who took the win there at Spa and the overall championship and teams and uh, drivers so tough break Brad sorry about that well you know it's a, it's a real disappointment uh, for us and for a lot of these guys out on track obviously but uh, I know that we do have some viewers that like to tune in and uh, catch some of this action personally I think it's the best uh, sim racing action available and I've checked out quite a bit of it uh, out there on the internet so uh, we really appreciate uh, you suffering through some of these uh, technical problems, as we have as well. And, uh, you know, we'll just make sure that we get it cleaned up for you uh, coming up this next season. And, of course, this next Thursday, too. So uh, still a bit of racing to go and a lot of good pictures to come. Thank, thanks, everybody, for uh, tuning in this season. Yep, thanks, guys. And uh, keep, uh, keep your eye out for uh, uh, next season uh, information, which will be posted uh, uh, very soon. So, um, thanks again, everybody who has uh, tuned in throughout the season, and uh, hopefully you'll, we'll see you back next season um, uh, for some more GTR2 action. Hopefully, uh, we get a little something new along the lines here eventually, and uh, um, just move forward here at NEGP. So, thanks a lot, guys. Uh, thanks, Brad, again for helping out the season, and uh, we'll see you Thursday night.